Hello. So, Britain and France nearly went to war a few days ago, and it was all over a lot of fishing boats in the main port of the island of Jersey, which is St. Helier. And what does this have to do with the election of an MP in Hartlepool, I hear you ask? Well, stick around and I'll tell you. Let's start with the little spat in St. Helier. You see, when Britain went into the European Union 50 years ago, no, yeah, uh, something like that, uh, 1972, wasn't it? Yeah, nearly 50 years ago, bit by bit, the fishing industry in these islands was strangled by the EU fishing policies. Which, well, to simplify things a little bit over much, what happened was the EU took control of British territorial waters as far as fishing was concerned, and they made quotas for the different countries, and they divided them the, the waters all up between all the European countries, which meant that the British fishing industry had to compete with the fishing industries uh, from all over the European Union. Now, you guys in America might ask, why would Britain give up its fishing industry so that a load of Spanish trawlers could, uh, well, could trawl the North Sea for our flatfish? Well, I, I could hear the dog coming up the stairs. That's why I stopped. Well, you might well ask, and the answer is, actually, I don't know what the answer is, because quite frankly, every answer I've ever heard from any politician has made absolutely no sense to me at all. So let's get back to the near war between the United Kingdom and the French Republic or more between Britain and the EU, because, you know, the EU have been using France as a proxy in this situation. We have to remember that the EU is dead set on trying anything it can to make Britain regret its decision to leave. And in doing so, it's managing to turn Remainers into Brexiteers by the thousands, and I'll prove that in a minute or two. So, back to Jersey. You have to remember that Jersey and Guernsey are not actually British territory. They're what's called crown dependencies. They have their own government, which is quite separate uh, from British law. Uh, of course, it's parallel in most ways. Uh, but more to the point, being self-governing islands, they have their own territorial waters. So, first of all, here's a map of uh, Jersey and Guernsey, and you will notice that they are very, very close to the French coast. And so, you know, I, I understand the problems that the French fishermen are having. I, I do understand that, but that's not the way the law operates. Here's the map showing the Jersey and Guernsey territorial waters. I'm sure you can see the problem. French fishermen who've had access to these waters for the past 50 years under EU agreements are suddenly finding that Jersey and Guernsey are telling them they have to get licenses to fish these waters and that some of them aren't allowed to do so at all, as Jersey and Guernsey have their own ideas about conservation of stocks, which are probably much less generous than the ones set by the EU. You can understand the French fishermen being both upset and confused. As I said, the EU has been in control of this for about 50 years, so most of the people out there in the French boats would have known no other system. It would be like you uh, your whole life driving down a road to the shops and then one day discovering that the road has been taken over by another local authority and they've suddenly started charging a toll for you to drive on it. Anyway, the French fishing fleet decided to do what those Trump supporters did when they mobbed the capital. It was an action both stupid and pointless because they had no power of their own. What did they expect to happen? 50, no, sorry, it was 70, 70 fishing boats or thereabouts blockaded the Jersey port of St. Helier. And that, by the way, is an act of war. 
So, well, two Royal Navy ships immediately set out to police the blockage. I don't know quite what they intended to do, but their remit was to observe and possibly move on the boats if they could. They had no choice. No government could stand by and let a foreign fleet blockade one of their ports. Then the French president did something even more stupid and pointless by sending out a French ship, uh, some sort of warship. I don't know what class it was, but I do know it was armed. Honestly, and what did Macron think he could do? Blow HMS Tamar and HMS 7 out of the water? And uh, France's European Affairs Minister, uh, Clement Bone, said... His government would not be intimidated by the UK's show of force, which is ridiculous considering it was his ships who were actually invading British waters, or at least the waters of a British protectorate. Macron didn't improve things by then threatening Jersey with cutting off its electricity supply. You can see Jersey has only small generators and they were taking electricity electricity from um, a French power station, which, by the way, was not an, uh, an agreement with the French government. It was a private business agreement between the government of Jersey and uh, a French energy company. So Macron was actually interfering in a, a trade agreement as well, a private trade agreement. OK, so, I mean, the whole thing's too ridiculous for words, of course, the French had to back down because they were acting like complete idiots. And now I want to take a short hop to Hartlepool, which is in the north of England. And it had an election on the 7th of May. Uh, here's a map, uh, I hope. And you may notice from the, from the map that Hartlepool is on the coast. It was a very busy fishing port once, and it still has some fishing industry now, but not half the size it used to be before the EU. Well, I wasn't in Hartlepool uh, during the elections, but I'll bet the people in Hartlepool were watching this Jersey fracas with enormous interest. Hartlepool has been a Labour stronghold for 62 years. I mean, you, you saw somebody from Hartlepool, you knew there were going to be a Labour voter. And in this election, the Conservatives got in by a nearly 7,000 majority, which is about the same as the majority Labour had over the Conservatives in the last election, which was in 2017. That's a huge swing. And it's especially astonishing uh, because it happened with a serving government. I mean, the pattern of voting in, in Britain has always been that people are pretty fed up with serving governments after a few years and they punish them uh, through the polls whenever the opportunity arises. So what happened? Well, I'm pretty sure it was the Labour disarray about Brexit and that any doubts any remaining Labour voters in Hartlepool might have had about switching uh, was they were thinking about Keir Starmer, the leader of the Labour Party, who is a famous EU Remainer. So any doubts they might have had about voting Conservative were swept away as they watched the French government sending out warships to back up a mob of disgruntled fishermen who were committing an act of war around British territorial waters and then threatening Jersey with turning off the lights. And all this with the tacit approval of the EU. I'm quite sure that was worth at least a couple of thousand votes in Hartlepool. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles.
go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.